pictures of our garden king Lift up your voice and with us sing Oh, crazy Oh, crazy Thou burning sun with golden Good morning. We're in another beautiful place as we come into worship this morning. Beauty comes in so many ways when we're in the midst of all God created. But also on this Sunday, it's a day of celebration. All Sundays are in a way. But this is a special Sunday. Do you know what we celebrate? In most uh, Christian denominations on this particular Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. Now you'll understand the setting that we're in. The scriptures for this Sunday are so important to our understanding of who Jesus is and who God is that in all three lectionary years, we read Psalm 23 and different verses from John 10, where Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. It's so important for us to know what that meant and what it tells us about Jesus of Nazareth that separates him from others of his time who claimed to be the Messiah. What was Jesus really saying about who he is to them and for us? Important enough that it, it become a, a day of celebration for all of us. Good Shepherd Sunday. Because in the 23rd Psalm, the psalmists help us see God as one who is with us, in the midst of us, even, or maybe especially in the difficult times. One who provides to us and one who welcomes us to the banquet. And so as we come together on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we come as a family. We come as a family ready to worship, but also to be present with the God who loves us, provides for us, protects us, and welcomes us to the table of grace. I'm Dr. Lee, I'm Minister of Congregational Care. Welcome to White Plains.
There's a lot of translations for Psalm 23. There's a lot of different ways to read it. You might be most familiar with the New Revised Standard Version or the King James Version. Those are the versions that we most read when we are in worship services. Um, and uh, I would invite you to uh, go to Bible Gateway and look at all of the different translations that are available, reading this psalm in all of the different translations, maybe even focusing on the message first and then venturing into other translations as well. I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. That was an amen. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, I know, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I showed up and while we were videoing and filming, Mr. Jim was telling me that he purchased this place straight from Indiana, rolls into New Hill, North Carolina in 1991 and buys this piece of property. And at the time it was being used as a dump. And if you look around now, it's anything but. There's life here. There's green grass here. There are animals that are being born and growing and living and dying. The circle of life is happening here and it's a vibrant place. Part of the reason why we're filming here is to be able to, to remind you that, um, that the change that we experience, the newness that we experience, uh, is to be celebrated and experienced fully. Um, even the tough changes, to experience it fully. And so 
when we pray, we are mindful of this. And the reason why we often call this the prayer of the people is because it is our prayers for others and the prayers that we want to maintain throughout the week. We don't just pray this on Sunday. Every morning we wake up continuing to pray a prayer like this, similar to this, in our own words, in our own way, and praying for the needs of our friends, our family, our state, our country, and the world. I invite you now to pray with me. Dearest Lord, Holy Lamb of God, Shepherd of the world, we follow you, Lord, because we know your voice. We know that you will lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. You yourself are the gate. We can only come to the throne of grace through you. And you are truly with us, Emmanuel. You are God with us. So we will not fear evil, but be comforted. You came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. You have prepared your table for us and anoint us for service. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit. All of us are like sheep who have gone astray. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Forgive us and free us for joyful obedience. Help us to follow the example of Christ. He left his petitions in the hands of God who always judges fairly. Help us to remember that he personally carried away our sins in his own body so we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Help us to rejoice that we have been healed by his wounds. Once we were wandering like lost sheep, but now we have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of our souls. And all we can say is thank you. All we can do is pray that your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. We pray this in the name of your Son, the Holy Lamb of God. Amen. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they'll run from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they didn't understand what he was saying to them. Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Good morning. Let me add my welcome to those you've already heard. I'm Rob, pastor of Invitation and Engagement here at White Plains, and so glad to be bringing you the message today while Pastor Kelly Lynn is away enjoying her time. And we're in a pretty special place here uh, to talk about sheep and shepherds. And I thought about giving you uh, some version of the old pastor's greeting, good morning, saints, good morning, sinners. I was going to say, good morning, sheep, to which I don't know how you would respond to that. You might say, good morning, shepherd, <laughs> or maybe um, you might say, 
what are you calling a sheep? <laughs> because the whole term sheep nowadays has taken on a pretty negative connotation. It's sort of used as a pejorative term to say something bad about a group of people that is not discerning, right? Or uh, doesn't just blindly accepts whatever they're fed or whatever happens to them. But here in the 10th chapter of John, Jesus says some pretty amazing things about sheep and some pretty amazing things about the people that tend to them and about himself. And I, I hope you'll listen as, as we share that with you today. By the way, does anybody else wonder how here on the fourth Sunday of Easter, where we've been talking about Jesus' resurrection and how he appears to the disciples and that all of a sudden we find ourselves way back in John 10? Is this liturgical whiplash? <laughs> uh, no, actually, the fourth Sunday of Easter, now, I didn't know this, and so I was a little confused, and so I did what any normal staff person around here would do. I asked Kelly Lynn, and she said, well, yeah, the fourth Sunday of Easter is always Shepherd's Sunday. We read the 23rd Psalm. We hear the story of John 10. I said, oh, yeah, okay. It helped to make sense because now, we're not, now we are still talking about the resurrected Christ. He is risen, right? Risen indeed. And yet we're looking both behind at what he said and ahead to where he is going to prepare a place for us as he ascends and the Spirit comes down at Pentecost. All that is sights and sounds and stories that we'll look forward to hearing in the coming weeks. And so looking back through that resurrection lens helps us to understand what Jesus meant when he talked about sheep and shepherds. When Jesus describes himself as a shepherd, here in these verses of John 10, he's laying into a biblical narrative that his audience would be very familiar with. Of course, there's the familiar words of the 23rd Psalm, where God is referenced to as shepherd, and many other times in Scripture. Consider the 23rd Psalm for just a moment, right? It's not some Shakespearean simile where the author says, my God is like a shepherd. No, it's a declarative statement. My God. The Lord is my shepherd. And all of the verbs are action-oriented word. He goes, he prepares, he shelters me. And it's a message that we can live without fear, ultimately. But the 23rd Psalm is by far not the only reference to shepherds and sheep in the, in the scriptures. There's a prophecy in Ezekiel that God will send a shepherd for the nation of Israel. Jesus is aware of this when he calls himself the shepherd and when he says, the sheep hear my voice and the sheep know my voice. And of course, there's David, the shepherd who becomes king. Jesus is coming out of the house of David, out of the line of David. All of this is significant. And when Jesus says, I am the shepherd and the sheep know my voice, I'm the one that comes through the gate for the sheep. Everyone else who enters by another way is a thief and a robber. He's setting himself apart from false messiahs and false prophets that have come this way before and offered similar promises. He's saying, no, no, I'm here. I am the shepherd and you will know that I am the shepherd because the sheep hear my voice. And if you ever watch sheep react to shepherds, you'll know that's true. See, in those times, sheep were kept communally. If we think of the Luke story of the shepherds out watching their flocks by night, you might think of separate dots and enclaves of shepherds with flocks of sheep around them, but that's not the way it was. They were kept together in a communal pen and the sheep would mix and mingle and then each shepherd would step forward and call and call out their sheep. And because the sheep know their voice, they would come to them. Sheep in the Middle East are not herded by dogs the way that they were in England, but rather pulled and called and led by the shepherd. All of these metaphors Jesus 
would have been familiar with and the people he was speaking to would have been familiar with. But his audience, primarily the Pharisees, the author says in verse 6 that they don't get it. He, Jesus goes all the way through this analogy of being the sheep. The sheep know my voice. I am the shepherd, right? But they don't understand. Now, bear in mind, this is coming right after the story in John chapter 9 of Jesus healing a blind man. And they have all sorts of questions for Jesus. And Jesus is doing his best to show who he is and how he does these things. Well, like the disciples last week on the road to Emmaus, his audience hears, but they don't understand. And so Jesus takes a step back. And in my mind, I hear him saying, all right, let me try this again. Instead of naming himself as the shepherd who calls the sheep, he says, see that gate over there that keeps the shape, the sheep safe at night and through which they go out into the pasture? I'm the gate. I'm the door through which the sheep go, through which the sheep are led into pasture or as he says more specifically, into abundant life. Now, there's a school of thought when Jesus says this, that I am the gate to the sheep pen, I'm the door, that he's really just expanding on this idea of himself as shepherd, because in those times, one of the ways that the shepherds would protect the sheep at night is to actually lay themselves down in the gate and they would bar the way toward any predators that might be coming in the night uh, or any sheep that might be trying to escape. But I think it's something altogether different. I think Jesus is frustrated with his um, audience, that they're not hearing what he has to say. And so he says, all right, all right. Yes, I'm the shepherd, but let me go further to say, I'm also the gate. I'm the door, I'm the way that the sheep come in and out and are led into pasture. This is one of the famous identity statements that Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. You're probably familiar with them. He says, I am the bread of life. He says, I am the light of the world. Here he says, I am the door. Later in the same chapter, he reiterates that I am the good shepherd. In chapter 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. In 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, in chapter 15, he says, I am the true vine. In each one of these identity statements, or I am statements, Jesus is sharing who he is and what he does in a very powerful way. And this image of Christ as door, as gate, is what I want to leave with you today. Because the sheep turn out to be pretty discerning. They hear his voice. They know his voice. They're willing to follow. Sadly, most of us supposedly superior humans still have a lot of trouble when it comes to following the simple commands to love God and to love neighbor above all. Jesus says that any idol we put ahead of God and love of neighbor is false. He says the thief comes to steal and destroy, but I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Greek word there literally translates to plentiful, abundant, plentiful, and what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean all the money you want and all the good health you want. It doesn't mean the life that you want. It means a life that sustains, a life that gives back, a life that lives in harmony 
with other lives around it. A life lived out in relationship. That's the abundant life, the plentiful life, the life into which we are called. And Jesus is that door that we walk through. Won't you hear that call? Won't you be a little bit more like the sheep that hears its master's voice and follows? The call and response of discipleship is what we try and be about here at White Plains. Centering our lives more and more on loving God and loving neighbor, hearing Christ's call to walk in peace and justice together. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of walking in May as part of Church on the Street. I hope if you're watching this, even perhaps for the first time, that you'll share it or come in person and get connected or just reach out to us through the website and let us know because church on the street is something you can do wherever you are. We'd love to talk to you and hear your experience and your story of the first time you heard Jesus call your name and led you through that gate into abundant life. Stay.